be available to everyone. Okay, thank you. Um, so it's my great pleasure to introduce Lisa Lane, for, um, to, who's going to give us an introduction about the course that she helped develop. And again, as I said, it's a future learn MOOC that was um, developed by the Creative um, Computing Institute here at UAL. So um, what I'm going to do now is, um, and the, the link to the course is that up there as well, and we'll put that link into the chat room as well so that everybody can access the details of the course. Um, what I'm going to do now is just change the slides. I'm going to go over to Lisa's slides and it should just come up in a second or two. So okay Lisa hopefully you can see that. Did you see that okay? I don't see any slides but um really uh, okay I don't know whether I'm pressing the right button. I don't know if anybody else can see can they see the slides yes we can see them you can see them okay cool i i can't see them so that's <laughs> oh no um don't worry right don't worry i have i've got two screens you know right unfortunately okay screens, so i will i will um reference my screen if i can get the words out i'll read yeah. my screen and um so i know what i'm actually um looking at but yeah cool Okay, so I've got the the slides up here. So yeah. Lisa, you probably just need to say to me, "Oh, can move to the yeah, next yeah. slide." Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. um, so you can move to the who I am, and I I'll just give a um, a brief overview of who I am. Okay, so, great. just to give you some context, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but just so that people understand um, my background and why I got involved in doing this call. So I started coding, I was 10, and I, I know I've put still coding. No, I don't really still code, um, although I can. <laughs> um, I've got um, a computer science degree and I've got a master's in business and it takes, which is great. Um, I started off as being, um, would have been a program, people called every developers now, Everyone's called engineers for, um, for some reason, so for engineering, and I now um, moved into what well, as a people manager. That's my focus. I've had um, opportunities to be involved in, I would say, social enterprises. So I was a founder director of a credit union in the borough that I live in, Hamilton Fulham. Um, I now just volunteer with an organisation called AnitaB.org, and um, the reason why I'm emphasising more on my volunteering aspect is that um, for me, um, as a person that works in tech, I went down a traditional path, but I will say to people that I mentor um, and coach is that learning to code is learned behavior. And I've just been fortunate and that I was able to do a degree in computer science and I've been able to do a master's, but you don't have to do that. And all of that can go out the window. It, it, it's nice. It was for me. I just didn't want to work. That's why I did it. And then final touch about myself. I love Caribbean carnivals and um, I've been fortunate to go to different ones around the world. So it kind of it, it kind of bridges my um, in, the importance for me about belonging and having different people having different perspectives and not everybody has to look like me that enjoys carnival. Right, so you can move to the next slide. So thank you. So in terms of um, the organisation that was part of building, this is Code of Black Females, and um, they have um, been around, I think, since 2017, I believe. Yeah, since 2017. And I, I'm one of their, their members. I don't sit on their board or anything, but I'm one of their members. And the reason why I decided to be involved with them is that it's great that you've got um, black women get into tech. You might have skipped a slide. Is it? Can you see it? The coding black female? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. You don't have to worry about reading this. I'm not going to go. I'm. I, I am not going to read the mission statement or the aim. But I'm just to give you some context of the organization and basically um, they've done a lot to I would say get 
women into tech very much from the entry level and for me i'm not entry level i'm not even at that early mid level because i people manage and, and so forth yeah, yes and um so for me it's just giving you a bit of understanding of why they got involved with it because a lot of people are getting more into tech but you need to understand about the the concepts of knowing how to create tech that doesn't have biases in it and you do get tech that has um embedded into it um i would say racist um kind of uh, stereotypings which everybody will know about the common one i, I think if we go back the iphone you couldn't it, it didn't work with certain people's faces so that is something you need to address in, in regards to it you can go to the next slide so as i said i was one of the um the contributors to this and on here you can see that some of the 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 other women and we all we've all got different backgrounds so charlene um is the founder of and the ceo of the coding black females you've got jean who um again is a member of the coding black females but she's involved in another social enterprise as well um for that focus on women you've got apadisa who is also um quite well known in this area about helping um, individuals kind of um, level up but then also she's known for the um, techish podcast and she's written a book as well um and um there's also i never get her name right i'm going to be honest with you um if you i think i'm, I'm sure it's wrong so i really apologize if she watches this because <laughs> i'm terrible with people's names as well even though um people get mine wrong but anyway yeah so we're all different individuals and we all contributed in different aspects and the course will go through a series of um learnings in terms of the how the what the why the when scenario and i'm just going to give you a brief overview of the course if you go to the next slide thank you so in in the course if you're not familiar with it's actually split in over three weeks and the first week gives you an introduction into talking about um, what is racism and looking at racism in terms of you know the cement um, in terms of how it can impact your everyday life um, what are the types of um, you know issues that you can face with technology um, how it has been um, kind of impacted through i would say social um nuances and economic those kind of aspects but it's really giving you the op opportunity to to delve into that one of the things and the reasons why this course was done is that a lot of things that talks that talk about um, i say anti-racism within technology tend to come out of the us and we've got different issues we've got similar issues but we've got different issues here in the uk and it was more to do with a broader spectrum of identifying yes there's elements that impact what happened in the us but trying to focus in on you know how systemic racism impacts technology here as being the main source and so the way that it goes through you have some articles there's a series of videos with discussions about you know the different aspects and then there's some uh, I would say quick exercise to do and then you get reflection so that's setting you up to get an understanding of why you need to have these conversations the second week looks at you know give me some examples of anti-racist technology and um right give me some examples of you know anti-racist technology how you know how are organizations tackling this you know how do how do individuals um, you know, impact the building. How do you as an individual think about, you know, what can I do to make sure that this doesn't happen in the things I'm working on? And doing this, this series of, you know, um, sessions that, that are in, within week two, there's some examples that give you um, an overview of things that do work. And there's um, an 
there is an app in there that we did find and I, I, I do know some of the feedback people have said it's not really worked. It was just to give you an example of, of ways that you can get a better understanding of things that could be used for good and like it kind of aligns to tech for good scenarios where people are developing things that are positive for society and then that actually leads into the how how do you actually do this how do you set up your teams how do you understand about diversity um, is not the answer to building technology for everyone um, it's not the answer just to say oh we've got a diverse team no you have a team that has that incorporates inclusion incorporates equity so equity in itself can be loosely banded around I, I definitely believe and it's about understanding that you need to incorporate in that environment and understanding how data can be used in order to make sure that we've got an even spread of individuals that represent society as a whole understand that the most common I think the most common issues that we've seen in terms of technology is that how AI can be used um, incorrectly, especially like it, when they're building AI um, things that have facial images in there, which has been proven and Google was renowned for that, that it wasn't recognizing specific um, individuals and grouping them wrongly. And what it, you will follow in week three is an outline of a suggestion of how you can ensure that when you're part of that product development cycle how it should flow best practice because there's always there's never a right way and there's never a wrong way but there's guidance on how you should ensure that anything you build represents society that we exist in and it's not just it's not just aimed at one group it should be everybody should use it so that's you know the general overview of the course and um, I know I've gone through it really quickly but I think it's it's good to kind of have that general overview rather than going through in detail exactly what is covered in each area okay Thank you, Lisa. Um, okay, right. Okay, so um, the rest of the session really is just for a Q&A really. So um, there's a number of things that have jumped into my mind already. Um, I've already, I did the course when it first came out um, yeah. and it's freely available, oh. isn't it? For, I think it's for three weeks, so, which is great. Um, so, um, anybody can can and we put the, uh, anybody can join the course, uh, link up, and go into it. So um, that's the nice thing about it. Um, again, I found it just off the top of my head. I mean, I found it. What I liked about it was just yeah. the, the amount of practical examples that it gave um, of anti-racism activity um, in the tech industry. So there were lots of good things in there for me. Um, I've got some other questions which I'll maybe wait for a second or two, um, but yeah. I, I want to turn it over to the audience now. So, um, if you either you can either put your hand up if you want to speak, or come into the session, which would be really nice, or alternately, um, you could put a question into the chat room. Um, so, I don't think we've got any hands coming up at the moment in time, but. No. Yeah, so one thing I will say is that um, I think one of the drivers, I don't fully know, but I think one of the drivers for developing this course was the fact that um, the what happened in the US around, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement and having the conversations that people don't like to talk about. People don't like to talk about race, let's be honest, as in um, I, I don't really like to say race because we're all part of the human race, it's ethnicity, background. And in the US, it's a completely different makeup. And, you know, as I kind of pointed out, you know, I, I do the volunteering, the organisation um, is very American centric. And what you tend to find is that um, 
a lot of things are focused on America, but it does impact us. But we've got we've got similar issues, but our issues are are slightly different as well in the US to the you know to the UK. It's not the same as if you go to mainland Europe. And one of the things that you do find is that when we talk about racism in 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 the UK, it's see it's more than likely brushed over and technologies get fixed first in the US and then it gets fixed secondly over here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. And to, to, Mar to Rumine, do you want to come yeah. in? You've got your hand up. Yeah. yeah, I was just waiting to see if there is any question. There's a comment from Sarah about how future learn itself being a flat yeah. platform where when you enroll that's when your free uh, weeks is start yeah. or your free exactly. sessions. But then yeah. um, I did comment because um, not just in terms of race, but when you look at people who have caring duties or people who have disabilities and may not yeah, be able exactly. to take the course immediately, that in itself is a bit discriminatory. But I've, yeah. I've got some questions. I'm just going to start maybe um, while the audience come up with some other questions. Yeah. Um, Obviously, we, we know that in the um, uh, tech industry, there's like about, I think, 1.9 people, uh, black people mm -hmm. in the tech industry. And out of yeah. these, it's only 0.7%. Uh, I'll, I'll put this actually also in the chat. Yeah. So um, yeah. people are very much aware of this. And mm -hmm. um, obviously, um, software project management and development is very cyclic. And I don't yeah. see where this 1.9% person would fit it's at any point in time throughout no. all the cycles because obviously you've got new requirements. I mean I've been a software I'll engineer so you've got no, new, yeah. new yeah. cycles. So your thoughts how, how, how will we resolve this? Exactly. And that's the thing is is that and that's why I why I made the emphasis that most things get done in America first and it comes mm -hmm. here secondly, let's be honest. Right. And I, I shared in the chat right a link to a series of conversations we had and I was the, I was the person representing outside of the US and the in the US it's they record ethnicity over here we don't really record ethnicity so I even with those figures I do question the figures anyway number one secondly in terms of like right most um, when we talk about a lot of the technology that are used out there right um this will only work and i'll be honest with you this flawed right it will only work if you are working for one of the big tech companies let's be honest in that they're what you've got a lot of teams you've got a lot of individuals so because and they've got products that more of the mainstream people will use so they will have to incorporate um building in um solutions and making sure that they that there's no biases but even with that it's still questionable because we still have to keep having these conversations every year about if you google something certain things come up it's not it's not foolproof but i think especially when you have organizations and they talk about in getting people to come into work into environments if the teams right and that's why i hate the term when they talk about being diverse inclusive equity and and, and so forth when you actually look at the teams they just you might say oh right we're diverse but what does it mean you basically got two of the same ethnic backgrounds right and it doesn't it's not necessarily just white it comes in a variety of different eth ethnic backgrounds where you've got the same individuals but it's a male and a female whereas what about the non-binary people what about you know um people that have got you know different disabilities it's it's impacting all of that and having the conversations normally have to start with about the racism that exists and racism does not to me doesn't just necessarily mean um it's based on um your ethnic background it can be based on your gender it can be based on you know you might have some form of disability or whatever and organizations have to address this and it is difficult there's no for there is no as i said there's no there's no there is no 
uh, right or wrong answer to this, but having the conversations and, and making people aware of, you know what, you can question this. Why is there nobody that represents that individual if we're going to roll this out to the general public? It's not, it's, it's, it's easier said than done. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're early on in your career, most people are going to, are going to just sit there and say nothing. Mm-hmm. And it's like having the organizations that can support you. Yeah. Um, thank you, Lisa. I've got another question, which I think will follow on from Laurie, unless Chris, do you have something else? There? No, I was just going to bring you in on that. Front. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, um, Exactly what you've just said, Lisa. Uh, I mean, some of the anti-racist measures that we see are usually like using simplistic language, and you've hit it when you say about um, how US uh, uh, bring in solution way faster and how they react to problems, whereas the UK, we kind of soften and lessen uh, the issues. And we tend to use simpler language, and we also say diversify the team, which is again the issue that you've just said. Um, which is actually may not be necessarily the working solution to the problem. And there are also, I, I've noticed that there are also many black people who are who are happy with how things yeah. are because they don't want to raise issues and they don't want to be the first one exactly to raise oh, issues. Look. And yeah. it, it doesn't mean that they are not, that they are fully satisfied with how things are, that they are not seeing that there is some unfairness. But most of the time, they don't want to be different by raising issues. And there is mm. obviously um, the fact that most black people also somehow expect to see some form of reaffirmation of their competence, which goes a bit onto Laurie's question now. Um, how, how do you think we as leaders can empower the young? Like, I know there are programs about um, yeah. STEM for girls. There's so many yeah. other programs, yeah. not just for girls, but uh, for, yeah. for boys as well. Yeah. And and young, young, you know, uh, yeah. young, the, the kids at school and, and doing A-level and all. How do you think we can empower them to come into this industry when we are actually saying, you know, there's only like only 0.7% of women who look like you in the industry. They will be obviously saying, no, no, I don't want to be exactly. there. Exactly. And you know, the thing is, it's really interesting because the thing about I've worked in this industry for over 20 something plus years and, I, I, and I'm a lot older than I look. Right. So, so just to give some context, I'm actually in my 50s, which most people don't realize. So I've worked in this industry for a long time. And I can say that some people put what? Yes, I am. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, right. So, um, and a lot of people don't. And that's why for me, it's like um, I know that um, I know that it, it, it's not an easy, it's not an easy task. And I took the, I took the, the, I made the choice that I need to stand up and say, look, you know what? I've worked here in a long time. No, I know I don't know my age, but no, believe me, I know I am this age group, number one. Secondly, it's like making people know that, no, it wasn't easy, but if we don't stick at it, right, you need to have role models. You need to have that. And yes, I will speak up. You know, I face racism at work. It's been quite subtle. Um, you know, for me, Lane is my married name, but Rhyme for my, my maiden name is R E I N F O R. And like, I remember when I used to go to when I was at school, um, and then when I first got my job, in it was like, but when I first started looking for work, people were like, oh, is that really your name? You get that kind of sideways head glance scenario, and it's like, um, it, it's like you you end up in a situation that is either you 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 stay or you leave and i would never tell somebody it was easy to stay in this profession it hasn't been easy right you know it took me almost 10 years to get to a lead um position when i started working in tech right you were lucky if there was women there you were lucky if there was um a person of color forget you were lucky if it was a person that looked like you and you know 
I, I, I used to get, oh, so what department do you work in? Oh, do you work in finance? No, I work in tech, really? And it's those kinds of things, and it's not easy. And that's why it's about being present. And I hate saying underrepresented, I like to say untapped, because we have the potential, we're not underrepresented, because we are here, people choose to ignore that we are here. And by having these conversations, by making people see different role models, and when I say different role models, I'm not just talking specifically like somebody who looks like me, different role models that work in tech, seeing different avenues to, and pathways into tech. Not everybody has to, to follow the, a traditional path of doing a, a degree. You don't have to do that to get into tech. Not everybody has to code. Understanding it's about having the opportunities out there and encouraging people to stay there because it's much easier to get people in there but it's much harder to get people to stay in these positions okay um just before um i take your hand uh, uh take you take yeah. let you come back to room and um laurie's put a question into the chat um i'm sorry laurie i'm, I'm don't 100 percent understand your question but let me read it yeah, out so i was going to say chris we, we've used we're using a, a company called an organization called Ten Thousand black interns next year okay. um to right. interns and obviously we're we're ed tech yeah. organization i'm just wondering yeah. if anybody else has worked with them and if lisa's worked with them and you know what you know what the experience is like Okay. I've never worked with them, but I do know of them. And, and one of the things I question is because, I, as I, I mentioned, we, I'm, I'm a Lond I do the London chapter, this organisation, and um, everything talks about entry level. What about the women that are already working in tech? Right, right. So essentially, most people are working in tech, but what, what about them? what's what's the opportunities for you get all these young people but i can tell you now and that's one of the reasons why i i do turn i do turn up to some of these events especially like the code of black females because if you look at their um, manifesto it's about entry level okay that's great but what you tend to find and this is general for women regardless of your your ethnic background after five years where are those women that's that's my only issue with there's a lot of these programs they help them do the internships but then what happens to them because if these things were really working we wouldn't be saying oh well there's only 1.7 women working in tech or whatever it is right and it's regardless of being black or or you know or brown folks where are, what what happens to them after they do the internships do they actually stay in the tech roles? What we tend to find most of them um, to first survive out of those roles and they go sideways into other things because they feel that they hit this um, that glass ceiling even at that entry level. That that that's my only question with that. Sorry. No, that's that's great. I I totally agree. And in I mean, I work for an organisation that, as most people here will know, is primarily white and primarily male and yeah. I mean we've now got a female CEO but it's still like that and it's really hard I don't know so I've got um, graduates working with me now that are primarily um, yeah. black or brown and yeah. it's great but yeah. I still notice that they don't speak as much as white males I still notice that they perhaps aren't called upon as much as white males and and I struggle to make space and I struggle to um, find a way to actually boost confidence and to yeah. and to do it, but I also struggle to do it in a way that's not condescending or patronising, and I just need support in that. Yeah, and and I think one of the, I think one of the things that that I've learned with um, so you will get so the percentage what you see that are the confident ones, they're the ones that you they they shine upon. Let's be honest, but the ones that are reserved and like you know i really want to do it but i'm frightened to talk right you don't hear about them they'll start and then they disappear and they'll go and do something else because they can't they feel that they're not getting the same opportunity as the ones that will will speak up and the only way that i've um 
the, the way that I've seen how it can be kind of tackled and from that aspect is where some of the organisations that deal with the younger people, they've tried to do less formal programmes to get people to kind of um, integrate and come out of the shells rather than being so formal. Um, that That's the only, that's one of the approaches, but there is no right or wrong way. And it, it's very difficult. I do know that. I really, I do agree with you. Um, a lot of the organisations um, are focused on that. And because we've got a skills um, issue with, for technology companies, and it's great that you're getting people to get into these positions, but what's going to happen to them after three or four years? Okay, um, to, ru to ruminate, uh, you've still got your hand up. Is, is that a legacy hand or do you just want to come back on that? Um, no, I've just got um, um, the more like probing questions really. Um, a bit of very much um, what you've said already, um, Lisa. I mean, mm -hmm. we do live in a capitalist um, society, which <laughs> I don't think is equitable at all. And mm -hmm. um, what do you think we as leaders, um, and even through um, black coding um, organization, Anita B and things like this, that we can do to influence political leaders to pass some laws uh, that will make the tech industry more equitable. However, I must say, um, I must admit that uh, I don't think that all the laws uh, work mm. properly. They are not really deterrent to everyone, to, for all people. You'll still have people who are narcissists or who are racist or who are money minded that they will still keep doing that. You know, laws doesn't mean, uh, do not mean anything for them. And now I know we've got on this call lots of learning technologists who obviously are working in an educational background. Um, do you have thoughts on how we can influence, uh, you know, sometimes we, we kind of think, oh, the problem is the government, the problem of racism, yeah. the problem of any discrimination is for somebody else to resolve, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like creating laws or something like that. But then do you have ideas how we, like, I, I'm sure we've got people probably at different levels here. I know we've got academics, we've got mm -hmm. learning techs of varied number of years of experience. Do you have any any idea what you think we could be doing? Obviously, translating from your very yeah, much industry so, uh, experience. Yeah, it's, not, to it's really interesting. Sorry to cut you there. It's really interesting. Somebody put in there, like, she's, they wrote, I like, this is why I like um, the networks, like the pie ladies, I, but do you know what? It is about networks and having, be, belonging to different groups, but at the same time, it's about having communication and making it visible. That's really important. Um, I, I do believe that we need to capture metrics about what's going on in organisations. Um, it's not so much um it's no i don't think it should be i don't think it should be focused on oh well the, i'm gonna join this organization let them speak for me no it should be everybody should have the opportunities to speak up if they feel comfortable doing that I, when i say comfortable doing that it's a different matter where I'm used to doing public speaking. I'm, I'm quite happy to talk about this, but not everybody is. And it's like, I'm, I know I've got my own biases as well. So, you know, there's elements of where I've got privilege and I accept that, but there's elements that other people got privileges above me, but it's having these conversations and making it known. And I think as leaders and um in the us it's much easier for them to lobby for these things because these those organizations especially the one that i volunteer with it's been around for a long time so they have those legal kind of um tie-ins they know about how legislation because over in the us they have to record ethnicity they cannot they cannot record just the gender they cannot just record um you know the number of women but even with that that's still i think a lot of the biases you find, and not just um, in terms of racist biases, mm -hmm. you find in startups, and they don't have to record how many people work in their companies in terms of ethnic backgrounds if it's less than 200 people. And so it's all those kinds of aspects, I think. And there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of 
good um, organizations that are out there that are trying to do that and I don't know if you know of the tech talent charter have you heard of them I can put it in the chat right so um so yeah so um they they try to get the statistics of what um organizers sign up and they agree to give them data um it's been around for a long time and I would say you should try and connect with her if you want. I can, I can, you know, offline. I can try. I, I've, I'm connected to her. It, it is in, it is important to have people that are willing to stand up for you as well. I think that's really important. And definitely through networks. I belong to a lot of different networks, and you know, you are um, stronger if you've got other people to help support you. Mm -hmm. Indeed. I think that's an Thank important point, really. I mean, that's yeah. really what this whole SIG's about, really, is yeah. connecting people up across different yeah. universities. Um, yeah. I, I saw I mean, somebody just, wrote something. Sorry, I just just yeah. I saw somebody wrote something. I just want to just to, um, touch on it about Black History Month. I'll be honest with you, I hate Black History Month. Um, I don't. <laughs> when I say I hate, it, I don't mean I hate it in a horrible way. But I'm not. I don't actually um do anything for black history month because it's like why am i celebrating just one month of the year i'm black all year, the year round so uh, for me <laughs> i don't i don't do that um it's it's nice to they highlight um individuals but it, it what it you know you can't change your ethnicity just for one month and i it goes for a lot of other things it's like pride it's about okay we're gonna have this month to celebrate this no you've if, if you know if you fall into that category it's going to happen throughout the rest of the year and it is about communication and people feeling it's okay that this is the norm this is not something that isn't the norm that you feel that you have to just that's my opinion but some people may not agree sorry <laughs> um I'm not sure if everybody will agree but I'm not sure if everybody <laughs> wants to speak about that or not um it is, I mean, we've talked generally about technology, but it's, again, from my own experience of working in universities for the last 30 years yeah. or so, it's mainly within the learning technology area. And yeah. again, it was, I, I never saw a black face when I was working in, in this area 30 years mm. ago. It has yeah. changed, um, but I don't know to what extent it has really changed. I really don't. And I suppose it comes back to your point about there's no really re recording of, you know, sort of the different ethnicities working in within this small little sector that we work in, in, in higher education, as far as I know, especially within learning technology. So yeah. I, I don't know whether there has been any substantial change, but superficially, I do see a more, mi more mixed teams. And, yeah. and certainly, uh, you know, coming, I don't want to say that my in current institution is you know an example but you know they are doing seem to be doing more things here than many of the other places i've worked but i don't know it's very hard unless there's sort of you yeah. know a, a, a conscious decision to record things then it's all anecdotal really um anyway sorry those are my thoughts um yeah don't say sorry no true though that yeah. I, I do know that because I've spoke to people in academia and academia is has got a lot of issues in terms of not for just for women but for people of color there's hardly any um, people of color that are uh, the level of being professor um, it's very difficult more well, from what I've been told to get to that and um, yeah there's definitely issues with that somebody's put it in there there's an <laughs> academic yeah there is um, that it's not in just one area. Tech is more known because people know tech, everyone's got some form of tech. That's why, and people know about, oh, oh well, I've Apple, and they know about Facebook and all of those. But then when you look at these organizations, most of the, when you look at these organizations, what are the roles of women doing anyway? They, they tend to be focused in the, in the, what people define as being the soft skills areas and, and, um, diversity um, initiatives are mostly driven from the US in the in the UK it's um, always seen through done through employee resource groups 
which you don't get paid for and then they actively especially like if you're known to do things right they will come to you and say oh come and join this employee resource group no you need to pay somebody to do that because it's a full-time job so it, it is an issue in, in a lot of industries and until we get to that point where we're actually recording what's going on we're never going to really understand or have a, a real visibility of there actually is a problem not so much at they talk about this pipeline it's not a pipeline of people getting into it there's an issue a problem at the mid-level area and all across all industries not just tech in that what happens to women and what happens to people well not i would say for men it's slightly different but for women of of any color they drop off hmm. yeah so, all right okay um does anybody else want to come in at this particular moment in time um there's a few comments coming into the yeah. chat um there's uh, a comment from chris there is is this where invisible labor and code switching comes in when the systems careers um especially in and around academia historically built mm -hmm. on full white cis straight non-disabled men have assumed mm -hmm. knowledge language not to mention other barriers and bigotry so we either dismantle that system knowledge la language and or train others in how to navigate at all levels okay thanks for that comment chris and if anybody else wants to come back on that um okay. i would agree to a certain extent right. with that yeah right i would agree um, with that because i'll be honest with you right just to give you some different context about my background i went to catholic convent school and i went to school that was predominantly white i'm not going to lie and um and because it was a Catholic school, it was very much about um, education. And I was lucky that we didn't have the stigma of there was boys in the class that we could do tech. But you, if you speak to a lot of people, it's like they still have an issue that they don't do STEM because they think it's not focused at women. Um, and um, I think one of the things that I was told individuals that if you get a, a job, a role in the tech, any form of tech, it's one, it's the one profession that you will always find a job. You might not like the job that you want to do, but you can always find a job. Technology changes. Okay, um, I'm getting conscious about time now. So, does anybody else would like to ask a question? Um, another comment in there from south isn't some of the tech used by some he institutions for enrollment biased as well mm -hmm. eg difficulty with students with non-traditional i.e non-english names mm -hmm. Thank you for that I don't know if you want to come back on that uh, lisa i would say yes definitely i mean obviously i've got a very um I've got, I don't know, I've got very European, westernised, I won't say European, I've got westernised um, first name and westernised surname and um, yeah, they definitely, yeah, I think as well, some, what you, some tech um, solutions only have a certain number of characters you can put in for your first name and not everybody's first name is spelt with maybe what six or eight characters. You know depending on where you come from in the world it's like it could be quite long but that's that's a you know the natural language and then people oh how do you spell that why is it so long can't you shorten it so there are biases and i'm sure yeah you're not in i'm sure you've been oh so i can't really pronounce that can i call you something else right and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah and you know you yeah, see yeah yeah so there's, there are biases and, and it, it does come back to the fact that who built that? Who built that solution? Who built, who built the solution for the students to fill their details in? Because most educational systems, who, they're not coming from the big tech companies, are they? No. 
Okay, a couple more comments coming into the chat. Um, another one from Laurie. Assessment processes are biased. During the pandemic, we saw BAME attainment gap reduce significantly in some areas. Right, that's okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to say that I don't like the term BAME because it just, if you look at it in terms of how it what, how it breaks down, it includes um, ethnic minorities, that's what it says, and those can be people that are gypsies, they say gypsies, I hate using that, and Irish travellers and so forth. And if somebody saw that person on the road outside on the street, they are white, so they wouldn't, how would you know that? So that, that, so I think it needs to be broken down into black and brown folks in order to understand that firstly but I do agree that um I, I, I do agree that um that the um assessment is can be biased especially when they have the ATS systems where um they put in things that are are weighted against people especially women in these um recruitment and the algorithms, are, the question comes back again to who built that? And what you tend to find, a lot of these solutions have been built in the US by a certain group. And sometimes they're biased, not just by, um, they're not just biased by, um, in terms of like, oh, it's biased towards black individuals, they're biased towards um, women because it was written by a bunch of men that could be from I would say you know um, Asian backgrounds writing it based on what they think should it should be so you yeah, you definitely get that okay yeah. Um, uh, yeah Laurie's followed that but by, by saying uh, black male students close significantly towards Indian women and Indian women less so um, in the attainment gap mm. Uh, the game is really interesting. I can see it's an ethnic minority, but also white. Yeah, because it, it, it doesn't make any sense. I don't think, I think grouping everybody up together makes no sense. A lot of people, I just don't like, I don't like that. I don't like that term. I think it's, it it kind of, it, hide, it hides the real statistics in terms of what's going on in regards to um, somebody's ethnic background. And there's different there's different very variations in terms of ethnicity and to group um, a wide um, set of society under one bubble does it, it, it has no true reflection I believe mm -hmm. that's my that's my thinking you might disagree but yeah okay yeah. all right um we've still got time for uh, just a couple more quick questions if anybody else wants to ask anything um, before we sort of wrap up there's some interesting comments coming still coming into the chat if anybody wants to have a look at those as well um i still want to i know it's a related discussion but um does anybody else want to ask anything else can, can i chris while yeah, yeah, they, like in the chat I'll just yeah. read out some of the comments that were made. So Laurie mentioned about okay. the unpaid labor that it ex expected of minority staff is usually prom problematic. And then Samantha mentioned something that we still have systems that cannot handle apostrophes in usernames. That's a problem all across all institutions, all organization, industry or not. Um, and there's also Sarah who mentioned about uh, being under uh, ethnic minority, but then being white. Um, do you want to read the other comments, or um, you want me to go? Oh, yeah, just to keep... yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm just reading them because we're recording, and, yeah. and people who've missed them would be able oh, to point, benefit yeah. from that. So Laurie mentioned about traveler participation in higher ed is the smallest of any population in the UK. And Samantha mentioned that there are some gratuities in the good immigrant where Chinese population is not even recorded, does not even have a category. Um, and Stella commented, uh, she doesn't like the term of measurement. Uh, she likes grouping for solidarity, but agrees that BAME hides the true stats. Uh, when you dis disaggregate awarding gap stats, you see the real issues exactly, Stella. Um, 
And Laurie further commented that incidents of racism toward travelers is rarely viewed as racism by, for example, the police. Um, some very good comments there that um, I hope we take back to our work. Um, anything else? No. Okay. Um, we, we've just got a couple of slides of some future SIG events that I want to go through before we finish up. But um, I'll, Lisa, I'll you... stop recording first. Chris, is that all right? Yeah. Sorry. I'll stop again. the recording uh, now. Uh, well, hang on. Just um, I just okay. wondered if um, Lisa wanted. Lisa, did you want to sort of come back on and no. think at all? No, no. I think it's really good what people are. It's. it's I think it's really good to have conversations off the step you know off the back of just thinking about that course but there's other things that i know that it's limited but there's other sources that should now allow people to go and do investigations on their own and i think this is why it was um it's important to know that you can do that course but this is something that is an issue across different industries and you know you can google is can be your best friend i would say <laughs> in order to go and look for different resources but it's really thank you for um inviting me it was really interesting and we'll, we'll definitely um connect and you know if people want to find out other stuff you know there's a, a wealth of um information out there and different organizations as well to 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 um to connect with i would definitely say so thank, thank you thank you lisa yeah, no, thank you very much for, you know, giving up your time um, to do this little talk for us and take all the questions and really, we really, really do appreciate it. Thank you. Um, okay, so just to finish up on, um, just got I'm a couple of slides. I'm stopping the recording now. All right, yeah, thank you.